Cypre here and welcome in this new tutorial video about Paraview. In the previous video I'll show to you how to install Paraview and how to uh, work with the basic interface, where are located the windows, how to use different toolbars. I'll show you also how to import a source model or to look at the data and the various way you could uh, you could look at those data. So uh, now, in this video, I'll talk about the next uh, big thing in uh, Paraview, which uh, is called filters. So, uh, instinctively, instinctively, and uh, since we have the iPhones and all this stuff, we understand very well what a filter actually does. It's like you take a photo and you use a filter to change some kind of the para parameters linked to that photo. Well, it's exactly the same thing for uh, for filters in Paraview, except that you are not modifying photos, you are modifying uh, data. So those filters that you apply are applied to data and they are creating what is what are called pipelines, uh, which are used to filter data in a certain way. Because when you import your model, like this one, um, you have those basic results attached to, to the elements or the nodes of the model. So in this case, it's the displacement in the X direction or Y direction or Z direction that I have calculated with uh, another software. Um, so I'll put the model in the description if you're interested. Um, now, there are more things to, to do about uh, this kind of, uh, you don't, here I'm only looking at the colors and the legend, but I would like to be able to post-process those uh, results in a certain way. So I'll start by showing you, for example, one of those easiest filter is uh, that will uh, help you to to add to add and do some mathematical operation over uh, those different types of results. So it's called the calculator filter. So to apply a filter go here and you have the list of all the filters and there are a lot of filters available if you go into the alphabetical order of the filters you see the the whole range of filters which are available right now so you have some filters to do some calculation over the data to post process the data to do some uh, statistical kind of uh, operation you see you have uh, uh, you have some mathematical operation, you have some math some operation over the cells, over uh, over the time steps, a lot of stuff are available really. And what I would, uh, I would recommend you to have a look at a few of those filters, which are usually useful, the calculator that I'll show you right away, the contour filter, the clip filter, uh, the slice filter, which is here, uh, the threshold filters. Uh, basically, you can have a look at the filters which have a small image like that. Those are the most used filters, uh, which are uh, really useful. You have even F FFT over, uh, of selection over time. So you can perform FFT, uh, which is the short name for fast Fourier transformation uh, within Paraview. A lot of stuff you can do. So let me show you how it works. Let's use the, the most simple one, the calculator filter. So when the calculator is applied, you see that it's, it goes below like that my uh, model. It it's, is added into the pipeline. Um, and then my button is in green because I didn't apply this filter yet. It, it's to be applied, but for the moment, I didn't give it the formula that I want to actually calculate. So let's say that I have the three, uh, three displacement, uh, X, Y, and Z, and I want to calculate total displacement manually. So how do I do that? Well, the simple formula would be to do the square root of um, the x displacement square value plus the y displacement square value plus the z displacement. Sorry. So I can write it also like that. Z DSP, which is the name of my, uh, of my object. And now I can apply it, and you see that automatically this being applied. So you don't see much difference because uh, it's uh, it's merely the same than uh, the x displacement. It's very similar, but the legend is different. Uh, there is a slight difference in the legend. The, so, and 
the previous results I had were unactivated. So if you want to reactivate it and hide the filter, you just have to hide and unhide um, the things like that by clicking on the small eye icon. Now, filters are applied one after another. So now if I apply another filter on the top of this one, uh, I will basically uh, apply this filter to the result of the previous filter. So that's why it's called a pipeline. So you can create your own pipelines of different functions. And where it, when it really starts to be interesting is that when you have your own optimized and customized pipelines, so which are saved into uh, into files or into uh, Python routines or things like that. So uh, basically, you open your file and you click and you get whatever you want. Everything set up. So that's the kind of thing you can do in the, in Paraview. Uh, well, of course, you have to understand how how to do the basics operation before going to the advanced stuff. But I'm just telling you that this exists. So let's. Let's have a look at uh, some other cool filters. Uh, for example, one is very useful. One which is very useful in FEA is um, the filter that will allow you to average the nodal, uh, the the results which is shown uh, at the element center to the nodes, for example. So this here you can see that this is result uh, shown at each element for the stresses. So if I was interested to to display those results at the the nodes. Uh, and to do some kind of averaging, I would use a filter which is called cell data to point data, which converts the cell data to the point data. I'll apply that. And now if I were to look again at this, it becomes suddenly much smoother because the result at the element center has been uh, averaged to, uh, my, to my nodes, right? So that's a second very good filter for FEA. It's called a cell uh, data to point data. So you can notice also that um, some filters are in gray or there are can be used. The filters in gray are the filters that uh, maybe are specific for one special type of data. Uh, for example, text data curves, time history curves and stuff like that. You may not use, you may use certain types of filter on it, but not other filters. So depending on the data which you selected here, the filters available will change. Now uh, let's have a look at other kind of filter. Let's say, let's have a look at um, maybe threshold or no, maybe clipping. Clipping is pretty cool. Clipping, oh. So you see now, now everything is great because I didn't select the data. So select the data. Now I'm playing a clipping and let's see what I have in my property window. So there are, there is a clipping plane which is defined li like that, show the plane. So uh, the plane is shown is red. So you can change the, the normal of this plane like this. And if I apply it, I will basically clip my model, cut it like that. And the, the interesting thing is that I can also move it like that directly on the screen and uh, orient it in the direction I want to basically clip my model in, uh, in the right direction. So, though there are different ways to set up this. So this is the, the clipping plane. And now let's have a look at another filter, uh, for example, um, Let's look at the threshold filter right now. So you see that my data here, my clip went on to uh, right after my previous filter. So it, it becomes embedded like that in a certain workflow. It's applied to my previous uh, filter. Now let's have a look at another filter, uh, which is the control filter. And for that, let's come back to the result of my uh, previous filter, uh, which is the calculator filter. And let's say that I want to take those results and I want to extract uh, ISO surfaces out of this. So I'll go and filter, contour. And by default, so the type, the contour, the result of the contour is written here. So I'm, I'm looking at the contour of the result of my calculator filter. Uh, but the value range is set up to minimum and maximum by default. 
So if I was to click to apply, I would see only, um, yeah, I would see only the this part, the top of uh, of the model, which is the the maximum, the part where I have the maximum uh, displacements. Now let's say that I want a full range of displacement displayed. So there is a small button here, add a range of value. You can choose the number of uh, cuts you want. Okay, you add that. And now it's di displaying a certain number of cuts inside within your model. So it's all in the, in the white color, but you can also color that with uh, uh, different various colors like the displacement. Uh, in x direction or um, the result from the stress like this uh, whatever there are a lot of possibilities to 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 work with this kind of filters as well now let's look at uh, maybe a last filter which is also cool uh is the threshold filter for example so let's activate again this one um and let's let's look at uh, threshold filter so the threshold will um, will show you the elements which are within a certain certain minimum and maximum results so in this example i'm looking at uh, the the total displacement which is within those two values those minimum and maximum value so it's pretty cool so I could apply another filter to this part only, to post-process only this part, um, if, if I wanted to do that. OK, so in, a, in another video, I'll show you uh, how to do a bit more about uh, those data. Because now I've been showing you the contours of colors and all the stuff. but. Um, what is also interesting to see is how you can actually access to the data within the elements. How do you know um, that maybe the value at one node, which uh, one specific node you are interested in to see? Well, you have this kind of probing tool in uh, Paraview as well. So I'll show you that in uh, another video. So stay tuned and I hope this video was useful. If it was, like the video, subscribe to my channel and uh, let me know. Thank you so much for watching.